Hi, I'm Andreas Glad, and this is Houdini for Games. Today we're gonna have a look at creating a nice and thick mud splash in Unreal Engine 4. But first, we're gonna start out in Houdini 16 and creating the splash meshes we're gonna use as particles. And the process for doing so is pretty much set up a tank of water, throw something in it, and then save a frame of the splash as a mesh. So, to begin doing this, let's create a tank of water. So head up to the shelf and find particle fluids, and then you're gonna control click the flip tank. And this will hook up everything you need for a nice water simulation. So here you got your tank half filled with water. We don't need all that much water, so let's reduce the water level until you only have a thin sheet of water like this. Next, we need something to throw into the water, and for that we're going to use a sphere. So control click a sphere, and let's jump inside. Regular spheres are boring, so let's noise it up with a mountain sop. That's looking better, but let's increase the height a bit to make it a bit more interesting. You can think of this as some kind of rock that you're gonna throw into the water. Now you're gonna make the rock interact with the water, and to do that you need to convert it to a rigid body. So select your sphere and click Rigid Body Object. And just like that, Houdini hooked up everything you need for this simulation. Inside the Autodop network, you can see you have your flip tank, and you have your sphere object, and if you hit play, you can see that you also have the world's most boring fluid simulation. Well done! So let's fix this and make it a bit more interesting. Let's give the sphere some initial velocities and rotations. It's gonna fly mostly downward, so let's give it minus 25 in Y. And we want a slightly directional splash, so let's give it some velocity in X as well. Something like minus 10. And then we need to offset it so it's not flying out of the box. So something like that, and it should be hitting the water fairly straight on. And let's give it some angular velocity as well, just to introduce a bit more randomness and make the splash look more interesting. Okay, so let's play this. We missed the box. Right, okay, so let's reduce the x value a bit and move it a bit closer to the box again. Something like that. Hit play. It's better, but we can probably move it even closer. Okay, something now it will definitely hit in the middle of the box. But even when it does, it doesn't seem to interact a lot, and that's because we don't have enough particles. So let's reduce the particle separation to something like 0 0.05, and now we have a ton of particles, and now we also have a ton more interaction going on. And we also have collision with the sides of the fluid volume, and that's not something we really want. So it's colliding both front and back. So let's go ahead and fix that. So let's jump out of the dotnet and to go to the fluid tank initial. And here you can simply grab the sides and pull them out a bit. Now let's just jump back to the beginning. There we go. Pull this side out and let's pull the sides out slightly here. And the top can probably stay where it is. And that should be enough. So let's jump back to the dotnet. And let's try another simulation. Now we're starting to get some cool shapes. Yeah, it's looking cool. Let's reduce the timeline so we only have the frames that we have actually simmed, so we can scrub. Right, so there are a couple of these that might actually work very well as mesh particles already. So let's have a look at turning these into a mesh. And to do that, we're going to reuse one of the nodes that the shell tool built for us. So let's go into the fluid tank fluid node. And in here, there's a ton of scary nodes that you don't really need to worry about. We're going to use two of them. So let's grab this one and shake it free. Put it over here, the particle fluid surface. That's what's going to create the mesh from particles. And we need the import fluid tank, which is just reading in the particles from the dotnet. So plug that into the particle fluid surface. And let's see what we get. That's not a bad looking shape at all. But we also get all of this flat stuff that is not helping us. We only want to keep the bowl and the splashy stuff up here. So to get rid of this, we're going to do a tiny, tiny bit of coding. We're going to have a look at if the points are moving or not. And if they're not moving, delete them. 
So to do this, go ahead and drop down a point wrangle node. There we go. And in here, we're going to write one line of code. First, we're going to create a new attribute. That's a float. So start with f at. So f for float and at for attribute. And then give it a name like banana or moving, which is fitting because that's where we're checking. And that's going to be equal to the velocity. Actually, it's going to be equal to the length of the velocity. So length of at v for velocity and then finish that off with a semicolon okay and we're done and nothing happened well something happened if we have a look in the geometry spreadsheet we can see that we had v like velocity vectors and now we have an attribute called moving that's the length of that vector and now we can use that to destroy all of the points that are not moving so let's drop down a delete sop delete and we're going to change the entity to delete points and we're going to delete by expression and the expression is going to check if at moving is less than say one then it will return true and delete the points so we end up with this and this is a lot more useful than what we had a second ago However, I'm not liking the look of these planes down here acting like some sort of a base plate. If we visualize the normals, we can see that they're all pointing straight down. But if we check in our geometry spreadsheet, we don't even have normals on our points. So let's add that by dropping in a normal node. Normal. There we go. And let's add, point, add normals to points. And there we go. Now we got some normals that we can have a look at. So let's drop in another delete node. And what we're going to delete this time is everything that's pointing straight down. So we're going to set this up to delete points and delete by expression. And we're going to check if the normal or the y component of the normal, so at n dot y, is less than minus point, uh, say, 8. And there we go. Now everything that was pointing down is gone. So there may have been some casualties of legit points that were looking down, but that's fine. It's not going to show up in the end. Okay, so now that we've got a shape that's looking fairly cool, let's have a look at the point count. Uh, we've got 32,000 points. That's not going to fly for a mesh particle. Or at least not if you want more than one mesh particle. So we're going to have to reduce this. You're going to have to aim for something between 1 and 2,000 points at the very most. So let's drop down a remesh node. There we go. And let's see what we got. We're down to 7,000 points. That's a lot better at least. So let's drop down one more remesh. See what that gets us. The shape is still holding up, and we can try and increase in the edge length a bit. And we got 4,600. That's still too much. We could also try dropping down a poly reduce node. There you can set percentage wise. So let's say we want to keep 40% of the points. And that's a bit more painful to see, but we're under 2,000 points now. So that's good. The shape is starting to look a bit sad and broken, but it's going to be fine. And before finishing up, let's drop down a clean node just to get rid of all of these free-floating points all over the place. That's not actually contributing anything. And that got the point count down a tiny bit more, but nothing significant. Okay, so the shape is pretty much done now. There are a couple of things more we need to do before moving on to Unreal. So let's go ahead and drop down a null. Let's call this one out underscore mesh. Cool. And let's jump out of this node and we can hide the fluid tank fluid. And let's drop down a new geometry node. And this is the one we're going to use to actually output and export things. So delete the file node and instead drop down an object merge. Navigate to your out mesh. There it is. Hit accept. And there you go. Okay. So a problem is that. The mesh is located underneath the grid right now. So 
if you were to scale this down to zero and then try to scale it up again, it would move downwards. When we spawn this as a particle, we want it to move upwards and outwards like an actual splash would. So what we're going to have to do is drop down a transform node. I'm going to hit move centroid to origin. And then we're actually going to have to move it up a tiny bit more to make it sit on top of the grid. So the pivot is at the bottom of the mesh. And then we're just going to drop down another transform node and uniformly scale it up by 10 to more closely match what we got in Unreal. And that's the mesh done. So let's just go ahead and rename this node so we know that this is the output mesh. So let's call it something like Splash Mesh. Cool. Let's go ahead and export this. So hit File, Export, Filmbox, FBX. And browse to where you want to save the mesh. So uh, the mesh folder that you'll find from Unreal. Cool. Let's call it Splash Mesh version 1.fbx. And then you specify what node, and you want the splash mesh, and accept pattern, and then export. Recommend saving your file, and let's jump over to Unreal. First up, we need to get hold of our mesh. So let's go to a mesh folder, and right click, import, and find the mesh, open, leave everything at default, import, close the messages, and you got your mesh. So let's open it and have a look. It's not looking too beautiful, is it? It's a bit sad. It's going to be better once you get some material. So let's start creating that material. Go to the material folder, create new material. Let's call it M underscore particle mud. Particle mud. And let's open that up. Okay, this is going to be a very simple material. First thing we're going to need is particle color. So we can read in whatever we set in the particle system and feed that to our base color. So let's hook that up. And then we're going to use our alpha for specular so we can control it per particle system. And the only other things we're going to need are two constants. So let's drop these down. The first one is going to be zeroed out and go into roughness since we want this to be super shiny. And the second one is going to be at 0.5 and plugged into metallic just to tint the specular a little bit. It's maybe not physically correct, but it looks cool. So just go with it. And then we're going to go and check the material properties and we're going to tick two-sided. And that's the material done. So let's hit apply and let's check this onto our mesh. So apply, find the mesh and hit the arrow. And give it a second and there we go. It's not looking too bad anymore now that it's two-sided and super shiny. But it's a bit white and we're going to fix that in the particle system. So let's go and create that right now. So go to the particle system folder, right click, new particle system, call this fx underscore mud splashes perhaps. And let's open that up. And the first thing you always do in Cascade is you change the background color to something not black so you don't kid yourself because everything looks good on black. And let's start setting up our emitter. And the first thing to do is adding a mesh. So right click and add a type data and mesh. And that will give us a default cube. That's not going to help us one bit. So let's actually specify our own mesh instead. Go to content browser and find it. And there we go. And hit apply and it's humongous. Well, that's because the initial size defaults to 25. And since we already scaled this up in Houdini, we're going to use something between one and maybe two. And that's looking a lot more sensible. They're drifting upwards a bit much now. So let's just disable the initial velocity until we sort out the rest of the settings. And now it's under the ground, so let's just raise it up a bit by moving up the emitter origin by 25 or so. Cool. Okay, so right now they're all aligned and looking quite messy. And we want to keep the bowl shape, so we want to add in some rotation, but not in all axes. So let's drop in an init mesh rotation 
and just disable the X and Y rotation. So we only rotate in Z. So that will keep this nice bowl shape in the middle. And right now it's looking like a tangle of octopi because it's spawning a bit too many. So let's just change the duration so it doesn't overlap with between loops. There we go. So now we're getting what we're actually spawning. So let's have a look at the color. We're going to need a constant color since we don't want this to change over life. So let's just change the distribution to a vector constant like so. And we don't want pitch black. Instead, we want a nice chocolate brown. Oh, that's looking vicious. Something a bit warmer. Yeah, something like that. And the same for the alpha, which is our specular. We're going to have a constant value of one to make it super shiny. There we go. That's looking cool. Next, let's have a look at the behavior. And that's going to be mostly driven by its size. So let's drop down a size by life module. Size by life, like so. And we're just going to scale it from zero to one over its life. So when it's born, it's zeroed out and then it just grows. You can leave it like this, but I like to scale it up to one a bit before it dies. So at like 75%. So let's set this to 0.75. So it scales up and stops. And it's not just going to stop, it's going to fall down. So let's add some acceleration. And this again is going to be constant. So let's give it a negative Z acceleration of 500. And it's now pouring out under the ground. So let's add back some initial velocity. And now we're getting somewhere. Let's save this and have a look at what it looks like in the level. So let's find our particle system and just drag it in there. And it seems to be spawning mid-air because we changed the emitter origin. So let's go back and fix that. Just move it out of the shadow. There we go. Let's go and fix the emitter origin. Set this back down to maybe five. And there we go. That is looking quite thick and splashy, especially if you compare it to how this would look if it was done with sprites. From here, you can start polishing this, like give it a bit variance in the lifetime, like maybe 0.75 to 1.5 and play with the spawn counts and all of that to get the look that you want. This would also be a good time to go back to Houdini and by just changing the simulation and then piping that through the same setup that we used before, get some variation meshes to this. Because so far, this is using only one mesh repeated over and over. So if you would go back into Houdini and go to the dotnet and perhaps move this stone underneath the water plane and throw it upwards, you would get a nice looking spike type effect. Or you could just do similar things to what we already have. Or if you're feeling brave, you can try scattering some points and maybe randomly vertex coloring the mesh and start eroding it away in game. There are a ton of possibilities, but this is a really good starting point for making nice and thick fluid effects. So I hope you learned something and thanks for watching.